Yo, what's going on, homies? It's your boy Stumped back for the OPTC video. And in today's video, we're diving into the Garb Challenges, Heavily Demon 2 and Revolution Army 2 with the new Yamato vs. Kaido and specifically the vs. Yamato. So we're going to start off with the Heavenly Demon 2. That was the team. Those are the sports. Let's dive on in. Now, in today's video, I do have like two almost no stall teams for you. I couldn't get the no stall run done on Revolution Army 2, utilizing double Yamato. Obviously, she can hybrid up very, very well with a lot of very good characters like Uta, the six star that can remove paralysis. For both Dothi and Revolutionary Army 2 work very, very well. You could also hybrid her up with um, Frankie Tanky. General Frankie works quite well because he can remove the attack down on Revolution Army 2. Um, you can obviously use her with um, Yamato and Ace to remove Special Bind and Bind. But in today's video, I really wanted to focus on utilizing double Yamato and talking about what this particular character can do. Because in my opinion, she seems like she is going to be the most well-rounded character out of the anniversary batch. Alongside this particular character comes Kaido. And we'll we'll do a video on Kaido. And we're going to actually take him into Revolution Army 2 and... Dofi 2, so make sure to check out that video, hit the bell notification so you don't miss any of the fun, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, do all that good stuff so you don't miss any of the content as well, and I want, to let, I want you guys to let me know, who do you think does it better, do you think Yamato does it better, or do you think Kaido does it better, the beauty of summoning for a verse unit is you actually get both, and you can actually run two very different teams, Yamato, as a captain, she is a striker and free spirit booster, she boosts the HP by 1.3 and attack by 5.5. And when slots match, she boosts your attack by 5.75, which is very, very powerful. Very, very strong. She's the highest captain in the entire game. 5.75 is nothing to scoff at. She makes tandem slots have matching slot effects and boosts the chance of landing on tandem and then reduces despair by 10 turns. Big downside I do find to her captain is that um, whilst the attack buff is very good, it's a very, very strong buff. The utility of despair is actually quite lackluster. Um, Roger removing Despair was always good because he completely removes the Despair, but 10 turns of Despair is not really cutting it there. I would have loved to them to see, I would have loved them to go on like, like balls to the wall and done like 10 turns of Bind and Despair and make this unit insanely broken as a captain. However, they obviously like counteracted that by giving her 5.75 times attack. Now, the downside to Verse units, dual units... Uh, that they don't have super types, they don't have super classes, so obviously she can't buff the entire team. But to make up for that, as you guys can tell, she has a 5.75 times captain, which means she can do some pretty cool stuff. Because she is a verse unit, it means she has a verse ability. And to get this verse ability, as you can see on the left side of the character, you need to charge 10 Wano or tandem slots into the total number of uh, orbs like consumed. She reduces damage taken by 60% for two turns, makes cruise tandem slots have matching slot effects for two turns, changes the attack multiplier of tandem slots to 2.25 when slots match for two turns as well. So that's a new buff um, that has come out with Corazon and Law, and it's nice to see that they've been giving a lot more characters this particular buff. Obviously, she makes tandem mobs matching, so then there she gets the 2.25. So she just allows tandem slots to be a lot stronger and a lot more beneficial for your entire crew when you actually are gaining those tandem slots. Obviously, she has the ability to manipulate Wano slots as well, uh, and that makes her very, very powerful nonetheless. Um, her special turns the right side into tandem and the left side into block, sorry, into Wano that both go through block orbs. Uh, and then if you use her verse ability, you can actually get the tandem to be 2.25, whilst the Wano obviously 2.5. The beautiful thing about Wano is they can't be manipulated, which is very, very strong. And obviously, if you hybrid up Yamato with uh, Kaido, putting the two together means you can get a full board of Wano slots, which is pretty nice. She then boosts the crew's... At, sorry, she boosts the striker and character free spirit attack by three times. And if your captain is a striker or free spirit, she boosts crew's attack based on the damage reduction effect, effect applied to the crew. I.e., if you have an 80% damage reduction, or in her case, the 60% damage reduction that you see on screen right now will actually become a 1.6 times buff, which is very, very strong. It's a new mechanic. It's a whole new attack buff. And as you guys can see that it basically just gives you the damage reduction that converts to an attack buff. You don't see a new icon that comes up. That is the attack buff. It just You just hover over your uh, damage reduction. And whatever your damage reduction is, you just put a one point in front of it. If it's 60%, you just put a one point. So then 1.6. Uh, it's very, very strong. And it stacks, obviously, with pretty much every other buff in the game. Which makes her very, very valuable on Striker and Free Spirit and Dex teams. And when we are looking at big damage output, 
She is the only character that can do this, which makes her very, very good. If the crew has the damage reduction effect base attack boost when the special is launched, which remember she gives for three turns, she then boosts striker and free spirit characters slots by 2.75 and reduces damage taken by 80% for one turn. So this is very, very good because the damage reduction attack boost is over three turns and the way they really want you to use this is to use one yamato on the first turn use her verse ability to get this 1.6 and the 60 percent damage reduction and then on the next turn when you use the next yamato not only do you get the attack boost but you get an orb buff and you get then a 1.8 times buff as well which is very very good so running two yamatos has a lot of viability in short content it's going to have very a lot of viability in long content um she's a very very powerful captain and she's an incredible leader as well as having a very well synergized and all-round kit with her special her verse ability and her captain ability all working in great unison so being a free spirit character she's very very good having a striker character she's very very good and overall, this particular character is very, very well-rounded and absolutely decimates hard content and, and short content alike, to be honest. As long as you fill out the rest of the team with some, like, um, some cooldown reducers and some utility to get around the content that you need, this particular character is pretty much going to carry you through the rest. Getting all of this extra damage output, getting the attack boost, getting the uh, orb boost, getting the, the new damage reduction attack buff, you can do some really, really cool things. And obviously, being a free spirit and striker, she has access to a lot of very, very good characters as well. Like you guys can see on this particular team. I haven't even really included a whole bunch of like the, the crazy, crazy characters. She also has a super tanner mechanic, as you guys can see right here. And we actually managed to get it in this particular run, which was pretty cool. But we'll talk about that in a second. All right, so moving on to Revolutionary Army 2 now. That is the team, those are the supports. Let's dive on in. Now, as I was saying at the end of the... Dofi 2 run, this particular character has a super tandem ability. Now, this particular super tandem ability is quite strong, but super tandem really makes a character shine when you can use their super tandem every single turn. However, we did see the exception of that with super tandem Kaido being very, very powerful at the final stage. Now, Yamato has something very similar where at the final stage you get access to her super tandem, but in my opinion, the super tandems where you get them every single turn just seem to be a little bit more powerful and seem to be a little bit more reliable when you are getting your damage output and a little bit more fun when you are doing your team building. With Yamato, once you reach the final battle, as long as you have any two of the following characters on the crew, being any of the Straw Hats, Ace or Momo, you can actually get her Super Tandem ability. That's at level 5 though. At level 1, you need three of those characters and it is a little bit of a downside and it is quite weak in terms of only getting a 1.25 times attack boost to Strikers and Free Spirits as well as a 1.1 times uh, extra damage taken for the enemy for one turn once you get to level five though you get a uh two times a two sorry 2.25 times attack boost to strikers and free spirits and a 1.3 times extra damage the beautiful thing about this particular character is she hybrids up with obviously with as a verse character with kaido and kaido has a final tap so if you have a final tap tablet you can use the final tap tablet on her because kaido has final tap to still get the super tandem as well because the the abilities are actually linked in one particular um, one one actual hidden ability, which is very, very good if you guys have some spare tablets or if you guys are looking at maxing out this particular character. Nevertheless, it's a good super tandem. It's very strong. 2.25 is nothing to scoff at. Four free spirits and strikers, so you can do those hybrid teams and get both the buffs. And that 1.3 is a, still a little bit nicer than something like a 2.5 buff because it all multiplies together. Nevertheless, you do need this at level 5 to this for this to be very, very effective. So once you sort of put this, her whole kit together, she's very, very good in terms of being a very, very strong captain. She has a very, very powerful special. She has one of the best classes in the entire game. And obviously, you can do some really, really crazy things if you hybrid her up with something like Super Tandem Luffy or if you start hybriding up with something like Super Tandem Kaido and you do some shenanigans there. Overall... She is a very, very powerful captain, a very, very powerful sub, and she's going to see a lot of play on a lot of very, very good teams. For now, I have been having a lot of fun with the particular character, this particular character. However, I have been finding that she can be a bit clunky and doesn't sort of run super smoothly when I've been trying to do these sort of like no-stall content runs. In terms of 10-star events, in terms of 
short content like arenas and honestly just clearing this content without trying to no stall or anything like that this character is going to have no problems whatsoever she, she's going to easily tear through it she has access to so many very 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 good units basically every straw hat in the game can find their way onto yamato's team in some regard obviously there are some exceptions but getting the super tandem ability to pop off on the final stage is not challenging at all However, you obviously need to cater your team to match that particular piece of content. And most of the time, I'm finding myself not even worrying about it or focusing on someone else's super tandem like Laws or super tandem um, Luffy's. I find that they just sort of give me much a much better buff because I can actually use it every single turn. And then I can sort of cater to them because they've been out a little bit longer and I have them rainbowed and stuff like that. Um, however, once I do pull more dupes to this character or if I sort of put my tablets in, I do imagine that that final, that final stage when you do get her super tandem She's going to be doing some really, really cool things. And where this character is really going to shine is obviously in Super Boss Kazuna. Because she gives two of, well, two buffs to your crew that not a lot of characters can actually do. And honestly, she's like very, very powerful in the way that she only does. She does something that no one else does. I don't know why that was so hard for me to say. <laughs> she basically gives you a buff that no other character can give you. And that is going to be so valuable in those big damage teams. As well as just being an absolute monster in terms of very, very powerful captain ability for short content. As well as being a very, very powerful special for those other teams as well. So, overall, I think she's probably the most valuable out of the legends on the banners. Next to something like Robin when it comes to Super Boss Kazuna. In overall content, she's going to be very, very good. She, she's quite good in Rumble too. We'll do a bit of a showcase there. Uh, but like I said at the start of the video, let me know where you guys want to see this particular character shown. And I am going to sort of take her basically across the gauntlet and sort of run her in all different types of content. I, I do want to sort of take her into Grand Voyage and stuff like that as well. But I can't really decide where I think she'll shine there. Uh, or if it's even worth it because she doesn't really satisfy any of those conditions. But like I said, let me know in the comment section below if you guys want to see, uh, see me take her into something like that as well. Overall... If you did pull this character, be very, very happy. Obviously, it's a character to be sought out of. She is on a very high cooldown. That's probably another drawback to the character that I did find. A 15-turn cooldown is very high for what she does. While she has a very, very good buff and she has very, very good mechanics, 15-turn cooldown is exceptionally high. And if you can, I would highly recommend Limit Break expanding this character just so you can actually get that one turn of extra cooldown. You'll probably need to bring characters on the team so you can like get some cooldowns that way. Bring a ship that can do cooldowns. But I did find that the Victoria Punk ship worked very, very nicely for her just to increase that chance of getting tandem mobs, building up the verse ability and actually popping off a lot sooner. But let me know your thoughts and opinions of the character in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to belt the like button for me. And if you are new to the channel, or you haven't done so already, make sure to hit that big red subscribe button. As always, hit that bell notification. There's going to be heaps of content coming. We have a lot of summons to go. We have a lot of content to make. And you don't want to miss out on any of the fun. You don't want to miss out on any of the streams. So make sure you hit that bell notification so you do get notified when I upload my stuff. Most importantly though, homies, wherever you guys are in this beautiful world, please remember to enjoy the rest of your day. As always, I thank you for watching. And I'll catch you all in the next one. Late! Yeah, 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 yeah